Hi, right, once again, now I want to address finally what does all of this mean? Or as a professor used to say in seminary constantly, what's at stake? What's at stake? If you have been listening and maybe later reading my book, hopefully by now I've convinced you that your destiny, Christian destiny, is a marriage union with God through a heart fusion with Christ. Wow. That's what I'm living. That's what God has done for me and directed me, propelled me to share this. So I'm doing it. I'm following what God wants. Now, if you've gotten the point, and if you're ready for it, if you're really opening, let me tell you some steps. First of all, you need to desire God. But otherwise, why go there? I mean, if I, 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 I was a matchmaker, and I'll tell you about that in the next segment. You know, if you're not ready for love, you're not going to seek it. But if you are ready, and I remember when I finally was ready for the one, to fall in love, and having done over 300 weddings, and having all those conversations... In the beginning is the desire. You know, you see that in Psalm 42 and Psalm 63, that desire. So you have to desi desire God. Now, if you desire God a little bit, you can pray to God, God, give me greater desire. That's a legitimate prayer. And the mystics, the ancients, understood that the desire for God, listen, is a gift of God. God's not cruel. God's not going to generate a desire in you without going, without the means, without the desire on God's part to fulfill it. So when you finally encounter the God of your desire, you find out that God desires you. Or as Khalil Gibran said, strange, but as I drank of the Spirit, the Spirit drank of me. In the beginning is the desire. I remember desiring God, not for any benefits. I just wanted God. I didn't understand that. I was hungry for God, like you're hungry for specific food stuff, and nothing else will do. Like me in the morning, my first bite is peanut butter. I know. Laugh if you will. That's what I want. Second is you have to seek it. If you want it, you desire it, go ahead and seek it. Jesus says, ask, seek, knock, and you'll get. But first, you have to seek it. God will assist you. I remember seeking God. I didn't know whether there was a God or not, but I decided... I wanted to know God and I'll seek God because people claim that they have encountered God. So I started seeking God in August and November I encountered God. It used to be said, it's no longer true, that a man seeks a woman until she catches him. you got to seek God and then God will catch you. If you seek God with your whole heart, God promises that God will let you find him. Next, you have to clean up your, your house. you got to get ready. So when I was serious about wanting and seeking, then I decided no more uh, relationships, short-term relationships. I wanted to become the man that a woman would want to marry. So it's kind of purging. Purging of whatever it is that might stand in the way of you and your relationship. Next is finding. you got to be open and you'll know. Like the song from Guys and Dolls. I'll know when my love comes along. I'll know then and there. You'll know when you find the one. You'll know when you find God. Believe me. Keep at it until you find. And don't settle for a lesser God. God is greater than your imagination. Wait until God sweeps in and fills you. You'll know. Then commit. It's the, the whole bottom line of love is the commitment. God has already committed to you. He gave his life for you. Commit to the God who's committed to you. That eternal commitment, join and steadfastness. And finally is the wedding ceremony. Now here you don't get, I don't get the full ceremony. They say well, that'll be in heaven. But now you can receive fully the love of God through the Holy Spirit and the heart of God through the fusion with the heart of Jesus. Now isn't that great? Keep listening. One more thing I want to share with you.